To get started, you'll need a half a cup of cornstarch, one cup of baking soda, and three-fourths of a cup of water. You'll also want a whisk and some sort of scraper, and then a saucepan. Pour all the ingredients into the saucepan. Then simply give everything a good stirring until it's nice and smooth. And then you'll want to put your saucepan over medium-low heat, giving the mixture a stir every now and then, making sure it doesn't burn. This whole cooking process shouldn't take more than about three minutes. Once your mixture starts to get more thick, you're gonna want to switch out the spatula for like a scraper. And you'll see here it's starting to get thicker. And you're just gonna keep stirring it at this point until it turns into like a dough-like consistency or like, I guess you'd call it like mashed potatoes or something like that. It'll get nice and thick. And then you'll remove it from the heat. Transfer your mixture into a clean bowl. And here you can see what the mixture looks like. It, it feels pretty much like Play-Doh at this point, but it's very, very hot. So you're going to want to let this sit for about 30 minutes with a damp towel over the top of your bowl. Once the dough has cooled, you want to knead it together just a little bit and then you're ready to roll out the dough. Okay, so I'm ready to roll out the dough, but I've gathered a few supplies. I have some vintage cookie cutters that have like the nice little edging. Hearts and a diamond. Not sure that I'm going to use those or not though, I'm not really. But I do have a star and a bell, I may use those. And then I have some vintage cookie cutters that have the nice scalloped edges. So I have three sizes of those. And I have three sizes of nesting cookie cutters. And then I have some stamps over here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use those or not. We'll see what happens. So I'm just going to play with this. Now for the fun part, rolling out the dough. You'll want to roll the dough out till it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Anything smaller than that makes very fragile ornaments. Anything thicker than that makes it very difficult to dry out the ornaments and they normally will crack on you. So try to get it about a quarter inch thick if possible and then use dip your cookie cutter into some cornstarch so that there won't be any sticking to the dough and then you simply cut out your shapes. You can then embellish your ornaments. I'm using a rubber stamp, but you can also use like a doily or anything else that will make an impression into the dough itself. So I'm just pressing the stamp onto the dough and then peeling it off and it works perfectly. If you have a problem with over stamping and you get like the edge of the stamp showing in your dough, just take your finger and lightly run it over or pat that area and it will kind of smooth out that indentation so it's not quite as noticeable. Next, we're going to poke some holes in the top of our ornaments with a chopstick. 
This will make it easy to add some string or a wire to hang the ornaments. Once you're done embellishing your ornaments, you'll want to lay them out on a baking sheet on top of some parchment paper. Preheat your oven to 175, place your ornaments inside, and let them bake for about 50 minutes. When your timer goes off, take your ornaments out of the oven and flip them all over so that the back side is facing up. Then they go back into the oven for another 50 minutes. Once your ornaments have cooled, it's time to add some string, some ribbon, or even a little bit of lace in order to hang them on the tree. I found that baker's twine works the best and is most easy to apply. Then your ornaments are ready to be hung on the tree. I decided to add them to this small tree in my kitchen and I love how it turned out. I love the simplicity of it.